quite a lot of chaos going on here. It's time in these uh, sort of clouded over and raining, rainy day. So let's reglaze the door top. So what I've got is the door top face down. This is the driver's side door top. This is the right hand side door top. So if it were a series three, there'd be a big hole here for the window latch. Yeah, as it's the series two A version, or at least an early one, it's got the door latch, uh, the window latch up the top here. All right, it's a rainy day outside and the light keeps changing. It's changed a little bit for the better. So the first thing I've done with this driver's side, right hand side door top is to rotate it round. That's the repair. So I've rotated it round so the, the door top apex is nearest me. So here is where the, the window latch would be. And the first thing I'm going to do with this empty door top is to lay a piece of Bostic Prestic, which I've got here, it's kind of black, black window seal, it's quite expensive. And so it comes about from where my finger is and we go one strip towards the angle. So that's the first thing. It goes up to the angle, didn't cut the angle very well there, could have just come back another five to 10 degrees. Oh, we can work with this. So I've left the protective backing strip on there. When I come to fit the glass, I'll remove the backing so the glass will fit flat down on that you know, next to the outside world. And this, that'll be your weather strip. So next, I'm going to put a strip down to that end along there. Okay, so that's the second strip in. Just to give you your bearings, these should have three holes, which is where the, the steel or the aluminium strip goes down the angle. <laughs> How's that for vague? All right, so finally, I'm going to lay a piece of the Bostic Prestic style mastic along this piece and I'm just going to make sure it's all dry it's just come straight off the vehicle out the pouring rain um, where I was fitting it fitting it before it was glazed to make sure it's a lot lighter and you can put your head through it and it's very very useful to fit this not glazed okay so I've used one meter of that flexi strip and I've kind of run out about 20 centimeters 200 millimeters just about eight inches probably from where I want to end. And so I'm going to use regular uh, sealant for that. Also, I'm going to use regular um, automotive metal body panel sealant uh, along, along the base. So the, the glass digs into that. Now, incidentally, I've not put a strip along the top here. So, you know, I'm just doing it as, as it came off, as the glass came out. So let's put that fresh automotive or the, the modern stuff, which is not black, incidentally. So when you see me using two different kinds of flexible seal and they're two different colors, it's only because I've run out of the expensive black stuff. Automotive metal bolt on body panel sealant along this lower part what I've got to do is actually put the lower channel glass in now I've only got two screw holes for that one there and one there now when you buy a fresh lower channel or when you buy any channel actually you'll notice when you get one like this now this one is a series 3 one because it was cheaper than buying the series 2 one which I couldn't find but it don't come with any holes so fresh holes have got to be drilled. All right, if I said this wasn't tricky, I'd be lying because this is where it's getting a bit tricky. So it's probably difficult to see with this photo, but I've, I've laid the glass in, <laughs> I've laid the glass in, you know, on a sort of temporary basis. Okay, so the glass is, is laid in and, and the flexi strip has still got the backing strip on there. Okay, and you know, so has the 
bolt-on panel automotive sealant. Uh, God, it's protective backing strip on down there. Now that's a bit thick, okay, that stuff. And if you look closely, you know, the glass is lower here and higher there. Now I'm thinking when I come to fit it, I can dig it down in the sealant because the reason it is a bit high there is I've got a layer of sealant along the bottom there, along the, under the channel. Now, like I say, when you buy a new strip like this, okay, there's no holes in the bottom, okay? So I'm going to have to get my drill out and drill some holes for this, okay? So that's bugbear number one for trickiness because you won't be able to drill it if this glass is in place. If so the drill I'm going to use is a 1.5 mil. Um, I've test fitted it with the holes that are already existing as a rule. They're a slide fit. Obviously, some of these holes look a bit bigger. They look more like 2.8 mil, 2 mil. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So what I've done is I've, I've got the old one here lining up <laughs> with the holes across. So what I'm going to do is use this old one as a template. And when I've cut this one to size, if you look, it's got to have, you know, a fair bit taken off it. I don't know the measurement exactly because I'm just using this as a template. I'm going to just hacksaw that junior hack off. And then I'm going to just drill, lay this one on top and drill the holes straight through to get them located correctly. Now, bear in mind that this is actually the last piece to go in, okay? When this goes in, the side piece will already be fitted. So it's like you're saying, well, why didn't you fit the side piece first? Well, you know, you can't do it all at once, can you? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know, why haven't I cleaned this? You know, it's got, there's loads to do. They are a bit fiddly. This is definitely a bit fiddly and you've got to start somewhere, but it would start, you know, it'd be helpful if we had like the components of the right size, you know, with the holes ready drilled. So it's not, it doesn't, the way I'm doing it, it can't go back together exactly the reverse of it, the way it came apart. Because you wouldn't be able to put a drill to any of this stuff with the glass in place. So it's you've got to have it ready to go back together first. So now that this top rail has been cut to size, it looks something like, well, it's identical to the one that came off it. I'm going to use the old one as a template. You want to make sure, I'm going to make sure this screws on there. They don't want to be caught short with the whole thing nearly complete. And this won't go on because it's it don't line up. It's important that the holes here are the right size for the drive screws. The holes here could be, you could make these a little bit bigger if you had to. Because the screw can go through that. As long as it screws into the door top and holds the channel, it'll be okay. All right, well, I'm happy that that, that has screwed in good and proper. A bit tricky up the end here because there's not a lot of clearance between the screwdriver handle and the side here. But, you know, we can live with that. It's a bit easier this end because of the angle. Now, so now I'm happy that that fits up the top there. And that's actually the last piece of the jigsaw, um, <laughs> which we have just about started by laying the base strip in. There's also a piece of trim that fits on that top rail and this is the one off the other door and it's the stop it's the it's the um, non-moving sheet of glass stop which goes up up that end so I need to find that and that screws in with the top thing so whilst I've screwed that in there I just screwed that in there to make sure I had the holes in the right place because when you buy a replacement one of these it don't have holes in and save me drilling loads of holes in the door top I've lined it up and you know luckily for me I've got it got it together so this piece of aluminium also fits on there it screws in and there is shimming there's a potential to use shimming <laughs> to actually keep the keep the, the the rail in the right place and stop it scraping against the other piece of glass. 
I'm not going to use the shimming because like I say I've repaired these and if I have to use the shimming well I'll cross that bridge when I get to it but what I have got to do is find find a piece of aluminium trim that goes on this old bit then I'm going to actually then I'm going to do, do the same with the side piece now the side piece can go on and we can leave that on I think so what I've done here is the stop the fixed glass stop I've just attached it to the underside of the new channel before it goes in now when you put a stop on this you have to have a shim on the other side to make up for the difference there and so all of that will bolt to that top top of the door top when the fixed glass is in place the bottom the bottom runner is in place and the side the side channel is in place and this will be the last piece of the jigsaw it'll just slot on the top there and we'll screw that in by jiggling the glass backwards and forwards so here's the side trim and it could do with a clean obviously but I'm making sure I've got some screws that fit in the holes the holes this was the piece that was fitted here on the driver's door now the replacement side channel doesn't come with holes so I'm going to be able to use the trim as the template in this case which will come which will it will look like that when it's fitted now so I'm going to go and, and drill that and fit this to the piece of trim so I can bolt that straight on. Don't think this bit's shimmed. There'll be no need to shim this bit. It's got a whole length of, of um, trim there. I'll go give that a clean up. We'll go drill the holes in this side bit and then that will be the side bit and that will just leave us to fit the bottom channel and the fixed sheet of glass. So the bottom channel on this one has a stop doesn't quite go to the end there the stop is, is about a millimetre forward of that so I'm going to use it to drill holes in the new channel which you can see as the dark colour beneath that stop which is the orange looking thing the aluminium thing now the other the other door door top has a couple more holes in a hole up here and a hole up I'm talking about drill holes for screws so I don't know whether it's because I repaired this one and gone over the screw holes and not seen them but I'm going to drill those in later and I'm not going to shim this I'm going to use a layer of of that automotive body sealant so that it will find the correct level this is a series 3 door top channel so it's got a hole in it for a window lock but the, the tricky thing is is to get the the holes in the right place for the two that are here to screw in the the fixed glass stop which is that thing there that aluminium and then the other two I can put these in at random and that should be all the holes that I need and this will be the first the first channel that goes in after we've put the fixed fixed window in but first we've just got to make sure all the holes are ready to take the various components. So I've screwed, <laughs> it looks like I've screwed it up. I've screwed the channel in with the holes that I've drilled. I've left the window stop off because I've not put the window in. And it seems to me, I've never really noticed it before. The channel sort of has a gap there and it goes across in a sort of diagonal over to the corner there. And bear in mind that, that that gap is where the window, the fixed window, will be. I might put some more sealant in there. Now the sealant I've got is actually too wide. You can see it. This is actually resting on sealant. I didn't actually want it to be like that because I wanted to, you know, put some put original screws in there and screw that down. So I might actually move that out of the way when I've drilled the holes. Admittedly, my drill will get covered in mastic, or you know bolt on body panel sealant but that's where I want to be putting a couple of screws just to make sure I've got four holding that rail down oh 
Okay, so I've just verified to myself that my drive screws do go in the holes that I've just drilled for that sub channel, that lower channel, and there are the other two with the stop, the old sort of ghost of the stop section still there, and that's for the bottom bottom channel. So once I'm happy that I've got the correct sort of level on that. various Bostic, Prestic style sealant, sealants uh, will be ready to fit the, the lower guide channel and the, and the, and the um, fixed, fixed pane of glass. What I'm going to do is actually fit that all together without actually ad removing the backing. I'm going to fit that without removing back so basically what we're going to do is a dry dry wet down rehearsal <laughs> i'm going to do a dry run and uh, make sure that it all all lines up i need to be sure that 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 sealant isn't going to push the channel too close to the fixed pane of glass so my bottom channel now looks something like this it's got a shim it's got the fixed glass stop piece and it's got the actual channel screwed together ready to screw into the screw holes and there's another two screw holes up further up the channel and it, it matches these two screws here which I'm just about to test fit the whole thing together so as it stands the two screws with the stop fixture located really easily up here with the two screw holes that I've put in I'm finding locating those very difficult so whilst the screws have gone in they haven't gone into the door top they're very close but I just can't get them to locate at the moment and then right there is where the fixed glass sheet will will lay in and then we can screw its aluminium holder in later but I'm going to one I'm going to unscrew it there and locate these two they're just a bit hard to spot the holes okay just looks like a mess at the moment so what it is is the lower channel with the um, fixed glass stop spacer in aluminium there in place that's all screwed in the screw holes all line up it's gone straight along I've never noticed that there's uh, a gap, a gap down there, but there it is. It's obvious that there's got to be a gap. Uh, so that's all screwed in safely. Now what remains to do before we can start assembling this is to actually take that off, remove the backing on the adhesive Prestic style bolt-on panel automotive sealant, and then whilst the backing the backing protective strip can be removed from the adhesive then we put back this then we lay the glass in place on top it does go in that order otherwise screwing these down you'll just be fouling the glass okay so that goes like that so I've removed the backing off the adhesive and the black stuff is me Bostic Prestic and the rest of it is sort of uh, automotive uh, bolt on panel body sealant. And I've put a little bit extra down there to just in case. Anyway, so I haven't had to remove it all. I mean, the backing up the top is just to get just so we can put in this lower rail, which is the first rail to go in. It's going to be the bottom channel. OK, I'm going to screw that in right now with the four screws one two three four and those are the two extra ones that I put in here it is the bottom channel it's got its aluminium fixed glass piece stop in place all the screws are in place ready to go in and it's got a shim on the bottom there's a shim on the bottom just to make up for the difference in you got sealant on one side and no sealant on the other side so we shim this side up 
okay so we're screwed in and you're happy that the glass isn't going to catch on any of the countersunk screws there's only four of them but you know if you leave them if they don't if they don't seat you'll have a little scraping sound so now that that uh, adhesive backing strip has been removed we can lay this back down like that on on the ground facing inwards remove the rest of this adhesive strip oh yeah and we can uh, lay the lay the sheet of glass on top of it Okay, so the glass is it's now resting on the putty and I mean it's not it's not the prettiest of sights down there for sure and I don't know if it was my repair or the way I layered the putty but this was quite a fight and I actually had to remove the two screws there and move the stop plate so that I could rock the glass to get it to get it to settle in and um yeah it's quite a fight and i'm going to get down there with a putty knife and tidy that up uh, once you're in the, once you're on the front of it it's a completely different things when you're looking at it from the inside so that's why i'm going to tamp that down with a putty knife and then we've got to get the angle okay we've got to get the angle in which screws along the angle so it's a little right angle strip. We screw that in and that holds that glass in place. Um, the next thing that holds the glass in place is the top rail. But we can put that in later on. What I'm gonna do first is take you over to this angle. We're gonna screw that angle in next. So at this stage, we're done with the putty, thank goodness. And you know, Land Rover putty, it's always you could it's you know it's never it's never set <laughs> it never sets you know so that sealant is always going to be uh, kind of visible and but you know for now we're done with that sealant and from the ins from inside the window well I mean it'd be one of those things you should always be watching the road not bleeding putty so we've got this screwed in here helping to hold the glass in as is that stop that stops the glass moving back and that's holding it in as well so next we're going to put the side panel in which we prepared earlier flip this round so we'll lay, lay the door top down and the side panel screws in one screw two screws and I take this I prepared it earlier so it's got a little um, embellishment trim and that just goes there. We can screw that straight in and that should hopefully be one of the quicker aspects of this job. Oh, okay, with the side, side trim in, that's just going to leave this top one and we have to put the glass and the top one all in as one. So this is the last set of checks before we put the sliding glass in, which it's not even in the, in the same room as I've got at the moment, because we need to do a few checks. We need to check that the top strip fits the screw holes that you've got. Now I've got one screw here, another screw here, another one the other side, and one screw down here. So those holes need to line up, firstly, with the holes that are in the door top. Secondly, You've got to have a shim here because we're using a stop strip here and that gets your height equal so you'll have a nice run channel and there's the stop strip now the holes in the stop strip have got to match up with the holes in the door top see the holes in in the runner in the channel the holes in the channel and the stop strip can be larger than the holes in the door top Right. Well, anyway, so once you're satisfied that all those holes will line up and, you know, that 
it looks something like that channel to channel you know so your glass is going to seat ignore that screw it'll be screwed in okay and then this is the one we chopped a bit off of you know because i suppose it has to have clearance up there it's so right now we're going to go and get the piece of glass the sliding piece of glass and the interesting thing about my sliding piece of glass actually missing its little slider i've got the slider it needs to be glued on uh, for some odd reason i'm not going to glue it on before i've done this so what i've done it's hard to see the piece of glass uh, there's a piece of glass here and i've i've put it into the the lower runner okay and the angle here i've got sort of angle she's coming up i'm holding her about 20 degrees maybe maybe just 10 degrees up in the air okay so the glass is in the lower runner and i've got the top runner is in the glass and i'm just holding it out you know now down down in on the door top i've got the stop and i've got the shim and they're lined up over the holes there's no screws at the moment the screws are over there all four screws now yeah, so when i'm holding it up the top here this this top channel which is i'm just going to tuck it in, in a moment i'm just going to make sure that it, I've got it the right because I mean I could have it so that it was sticking out like sticking right out over there it might not be but it's all lined up and hopefully we can just press that in no screws at, at the moment the shim is causing a bit of trouble and the difficult part is going to be keeping the shim over the screw holes for example or keeping the stop over the screw holes this, because it's butted up, this butts up here, these screw holes should line up automatically. So by sliding the glass, well, I started, I slid, slid it up this end, but you could press it down. So now I've slid it up this end, take you over to the end, I've slid it up, and you find that you can press that channel home. You can see the shim, might have to, the shim, the shim is lower here uh, than it is there. So I'll have to jiggle, jiggle that about a bit, I think, possibly. But I might be, should be able to get the first two screws in here, holding the stop plate and this in place. It seems to be about right. So I'm just going to offer my screws up. And right at the moment, though, you could probably slide this. Just had a little, just hit something there. I'm going to have to watch that. Okay, if, if everything matches up as it should, and strangely enough, I didn't think I'd be able to see that shim, but I can. Um, now, I've got the the, uh, the, the the thing that you grip onto, the slider gripper. I've still got to stick mine on, and I need a window latch. Uh, let's just have a look at this. Well, when, when you first start to do this, you've got to watch it, because... You could be hitting the tops of your screws and you have to listen out for it. I've got one there, either on the top or the bottom. So I'll have to turn it over and make sure I've, I've tightened it down without rounding the head off. I mean, it's possible to dremel, dremel it off if it's too, too high. And it's definitely going to need some help. Uh, but I, I've got to stick this on as well, so nearly done but that, that's about it really you know it's uh, the glass is in and uh it's in in good and proper bit of a mess up the top there which i can uh, just tidy up with a putty knife i mean you know that's just needs cutting up with cutting off there with a putty knife and just those last last little screws where it's holding up Yeah, it's that one there. That one down there. And it's taken three or four hours to get this far, and to be honest, it's a bit of a, it can be a bit of a fight. You know, especially with these screws. If they, if the clearance isn't very good and you start rounding them off, it can be a bit frustrating. Yes. I'm gonna have to get the Dremel on that. I haven't got a Dremel. I broke it. The trouble is we, we dremel in that, you know, you never get it out again, you know, and there you go, but that's, that's life, isn't it, really, just get it done. Okay. 
and they can get it in any better than that. Maybe it's, <laughs> I'd laugh if it was at the other end. Let's have a look. It's got to be hitting that. Yeah, as strange as it is, it actually works. It works better. <laughs> the other way up, you don't hear it. It must have been the way that the, must have been the glass, um, the weight of the glass upside down. Oh well, there we go. I'm going to fit that now because I want to keep the snow out the inside of the truck. Hey, all right. Hey, this is why I wanted to put that door top in there so quick because now it's dry on the inside. Very nice. Well, there's a little bit of snow coming in this side because I've got no door here. Ooh, snow in the footwell. But this is why I put the door on so I could start to put the wiring on this in without it getting affected by the weather oh full of snow lovely